So in grade 10, we did do a bit of trigonometry, but we only limited ourselves to triangles that had 90 degrees. And then we typically used sin, cos, and tan. So sin was always opposite over hypotenuse, cos was adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan was opposite over adjacent. But realistically, we don't only get 90 degree triangles. And so now in grade 11, we have to develop better techniques so that we can handle triangles that don't have 90 degrees. Now, the first rule that we are going to learn about is the sine rule. Okay, so it's like the sin rule, but it's not the sin rule of opposite over hypotenuse. It's a slightly different sin rule. This, this rule goes like this. This is the depth of the formula, but right now I know this doesn't make much sense at all. Don't worry, we're going to explain and you're going to see how it works. So here we have a triangle with angle A, B and C. The side that is opposite B, we will call that small letter B. Opposite A, that'll be small letter A. And then opposite C, well that'll obviously be small letter C. So what the rule says is that if you take A, so that's this one, so that would be some length, like 7 for example, and you divide it by the sin of its angle, so that's capital A, then that will be the exact same as taking B over sin B, and that's also the same as taking C over sin C. Okay, Kevin, well that's all very well, but how do we actually use this? Because right now this just seems a little bit weird. Yes, I agree. So let me show you with an example. So all we do now is we have a look and see if we have opposites. That is how the sign rule works. It, all, it works with opposites. So what I mean by that is this. Do we have the opposite side to that angle? Well, yes, we do. That's the six. And do we have any other opposites? Well, yes, angle X is what we're looking for. And do we have its opposite side? Yes, we have the five. As soon as you can identify two opposites like that, then the sign rule will work. Let's see. So we have the sin of angle C. So we're going to use that one over there. And we have the length of C. So that's that over there. We're looking for the angle of A. So we don't know what this one is and we have the length of A, which is five. So we can use these two. So, so we don't need to use all three at once. That's just the definition. So we can say A over sin A is equal to C over sin C. Then you just go fill in whatever you can. So A we don't know, oh no, A we do know. A is five. Then we can just say sin of X equals two. The length of C, well that's six, and this, the angle there is 30, so that's gonna be the sin of 30. Now we need to somehow get this x by itself. So what we're going to do is times both sides by sin x. And what you do to the one side, you do to the other side. The reason we do that is so that these cancel. And so what we end up with is 5 equals to 6 over the sin of 30 times by the sin of x. Now 6 over sin 30, you can type that in on your calculator, but that's just going to give you 12 times by sin x, and I'm going very skew over here, I do apologize. Then to get rid of the 12, we will just divide this side by 12, and what you do to the one side, you do to the other, so those cancel. And so we end up with 5 over 12 equals to sin x. Now we need to get x by itself, so this is where you would use, if you have a Casio calculator, you would say shift sin of 5 over 12. And if you do that, you're going to get an answer for x as... 24.62 degrees. Now if you've done this section in class before, or if you're revising for an exam, you may know about something called the ambiguous case for sine. Don't worry, we are going to cover that. This is just an introductory video. So we will be dealing with the ambiguous case in the next one or two videos. So for this one, we are looking for x over here. So let's quickly have a look and see what we have. So we have angle B, so we have angle B, so I'll circle that over there. We have angle C, so I'll circle that over there. We also have the length of C, remember, because it's opposite C, so we can circle that over there. And we are looking for the length of A. So we have a bit of a problem here because we've got a bit of everything. And so we could fix that by just quickly solving for angle A because we know that all three angles should add up to 180. And so that would give us 40 degrees. And the reason for that is sum of angles in a triangle. So now we technically have angle A, 
and so we could go circle that over there and so notice we don't even need to use B thank you very much B but we've got all that we need in A and C because we've circled everything so we can use that and so A we don't know so we'll call that X over the sin of A which is the sin of 40 equals to C well C's length is 5 over the sin of C which is the sin of 30 degrees can you see what I've done there I've just used this part and this part I've ignored the B you only need two things at a time and so to get X by itself we would times both sides by sin 40 because what you do to the one side you must do to the other side the reason we're doing that is so that this can cancel and so we end up with X equals to 5 over the sin of 30 times by the sin of 40 and then you just type all of that in on the calculator and that's going to give you a value of X as 6.43